The newest DMR-HT from Minitone is the ATD878UV2+. Plus. I picked this up from Bridgecom Systems. You can see a link in the description below. I purchased this radio. I paid full retail price for it. So I want everyone to know that up front. The current price on it is $299. So it is definitely the highest priced dual band DMR HT in the amateur radio market today. We're going to take a look at it right now. Shut up and sit down. Ham Radio 2.0, where we do reviews, news, and how-tos of things that are new in amateur radio. Thank you for joining the channel today. My name's Jason. I'm KC5HWB. I love DMR. You guys know that I love DMR. And when this radio was announced a month or so ago, maybe something like that, I got a notification both from Bridgecom and from Connect Systems out of California. I'm told that Gigaparts is now listing it as well. I was like, I got to get that as soon as it comes out because I want to do a review video. Number one, I want the radio for myself. This is going to be my everyday carry. This is going to replace my 868 UV, I'm sorry, 878 UV plus, and this is an 878 UV2 plus. Basically, the only difference is that the top, the only, the only physical outer difference between the two is that the top button on the 878 plus is blue, and the top button on the 878 UV2 plus is green. So far, there's no other physical outer differences by just looking at the radio that you can tell. Both the radios come with a 3100 milliamp hour battery when you purchase from Bridgecom Systems. That may be true in other places uh, also. I didn't check everywhere. When purchasing from Bridgecom Systems, you, it comes with a PTT button right here and a small Velcro wrist strap that you can strap around your finger, or it probably won't go around your wrist, but you could strap around your two fingers like that. You can put it around your steering wheel if you Bluetooth the radio to your car. The radio does incorporate 500,000 contacts in the DMR database to accommodate for the approaching 200,000 contact mark marker that is on radioid.net. At the time of this recording, there's about 196,000 contacts worldwide in the database, so it's going to break that 200,000 mark very soon. So those older radios that only hold 100, 150, 100 or 150,000, those are long surpassed. The radios that hold 200,000, like the 878 Plus, is going to be long surpassed. The radios that hold, hold 300,000, similar to the 578, those are still good, but you've only got 100,000 more before it expires, so we're going to get there sometime. Of course, there's a lot more memory in a mobile radio than there is in an HT, so I, I, I suspect that'll be upgradable via firmware. We will see, but regardless, this radio holds 500,000 contacts, more than twice the current database, so it is very future-proof. You're going to have a long, long time before you have to worry about contacts being added to this radio that this radio will not hold. In addition to that, it holds 10,000 talk groups. It incorporates Bluetooth. It comes with a programming cable. It was in the box from Anytone. Comes with this really nice manual here from Anytone. Uh, when I received the radio, it was on firmware update 1.00. I updated it to 2.01 just now. Same update steps as every Anytone radio before, so I will put steps to that in a previous video that I recorded right there. You can click on there and see how to update firmware on any Anytone HT because it has not changed at the time of this recording for this specific model of radio. The box advertises, and the manual also advertises, that this radio will do full transmit and receive on APRS. I know that was one of the complaints about the 878 model. The 878 model came out with, with true APRS. It was the only ch Chinese radio, it was the only radio to ever come out of China with APRS at all. Most of them have GPS, which would tell you where you are right now. Big deal. But the 878 was the first model to come out with true APRS. It was a little bit of a drawback, kind of a disappointment for some people. It is what it is. The 878 Plus came out and it added Bluetooth to the mix, but it didn't change anything on the APRS. This one is advertised to have true APRS for both transmit and receive. I'm going to tinker around with that for a few days. I just got this radio in the mail yesterday. I'm going to tinker around with APRS for a few days and record another video later. So I'm not going to go over that today because I just wanted to get an initial, here's the differences, here's what it looks like, here's what we're going to do today, and that's going to be this video. So let's take a look at the screen right now. First of all, let me put these two next to each other. This is the blue button, as you see right here, and this is the green button. It's a little bit closer shot of it. Those are going to be 
basically, as far as I can tell, this one sits up higher because I haven't put the, the um, belt clip on, on the new model yet. But it comes with the belt clip, of course. As far as I can tell, they pretty much look the same externally. And we're going to look at the screen of each. And as far as I can tell, even after updating firmware on this new model, the screen is the same. Pretty much the same on each as well. So you can see I've got colored text over here. Of course, I can change that over here. I just haven't done yet yet. This is very factory right now. And that is that. So this one's obviously... To, yeah, the backlight keeps going off on this thing because it's... It's set to go off like after one second. I can change that in the menu. I haven't done that yet because I'm about to shoot my code plug into it. So let's look at this real quick. So we go into menu. These are your standard menus here that you're used to seeing. Talk group, SMS, call log, zone, scan, roaming, settings, record, GPS, digital monitor, and Bluetooth. And then there's an APRS menu as well. So the GPS menu was in, in this radio when I, when I had it at firmware 1.0. After I upgraded to 2.09, which is the latest firmware on the Bridgecom website at the time of this recording, it is, it's got this new APRS menu in it. So again, we're gonna go through this. I'm gonna probably do a deep dive on this at some point in the future. That's not the purpose of today's video, but rest assured that uh, we will be diving into that. So that, that's basically your full menu. You can switch between VFO. It's got VFO, obviously, so I can... And uh, did, you've got digital there. I can change the channel type to analog. Channel set, channel type right there. Skipped it. So it's on digital now. I can go to analog. This looks very similar to the previous KC5 HWB testing, 145.100 on analog, no problem there. So that all looks very similar to what you would see on a on the on any of the older models of the Anytone. I do want to show you the software as well. So I'm going to come over here to the computer. So this is my actually right here on this screen is my code plug that I opened from my previous model from the. Uh, the 878 Plus, the original 878 Plus. This is the code plug that I keep for it. I always keep a backup in my cloud drive just in case. So this is what the software looks like. It's very similar. In fact, I haven't, I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison at this point in time, but as far as I can tell, the software is darn near the same as the previous models of Anytone HTs and even the Anytone mobile radio. There might be a few small things here and there, but when I went to open the code plug, it opened it right up, loaded it right in, no problems at all. Uh, I have not loaded my digital contacts yet, so if I go in here, it's not going to really display much of anything. But I'm going to do a full download of the database from RadioID.net here in just a second. I'm going to load all 196,000 contacts into this new version of the radio, and it's going to load all of my... Actually, it did pull up. Okay, so when I opened the code plug, it pulled up the previous list of contacts that I had in my original code plug. So that's good to know. So I don't know how many are in there right now. Let's kind of scroll down here and see. So there's about 196,000 contacts in the database today. And it's been 20, 30,000, 30, 35,000 contacts ago when I last updated my code plug on this specific radio. I've been using the R Finder quite a bit, which has one click download of the database and it has talker alias and all that kind of good stuff. So I haven't, I haven't, been keeping up with my code plug as much as I have as I should have with this radio even though I always have this radio in my bag so that is what the current code plug looks like for my contacts right there so I'm really excited about this radio I think it's going to be an excellent addition it's definitely moving in the right direction uh, things that any tone does they do a fantastic job with keeping up and listening to the ham community and providing us what we ask for so I'm looking forward to trying this radio. I'm looking forward to um, doing more videos about it. Hopefully you guys uh, caught the short that I did. It's kind of like a preview advertisement for this radio. But we are going to dive into the APRS functions of it. And hopefully, fingers crossed, that actually works. I'm hoping it works on 144.39 for analog APRS because I'm actually currently working on building a mobile iGate 
out of an MFJ, I think it's the, uh, I can't remember the number on it, it's an MFJ board that they built to go on top of a Raspberry Pi, it's a Pi Hat board that will allow you to do multiple things, one of which is, is an iGate, and turn a Raspberry Pi into an iGate. I'm gonna put that in the truck, plug it up to USB, run it on the battery power in the, in the vehicle with an external small antenna on top, and I wanna use that as a mobile iGate that connects to my internet hotspot while I'm driving down the road, while I'm on road trips, so that I can transmit APRS from a true RF standpoint and then have an eye gate right there next to me all the time that spits it out to APRS.5. We're probably going to do some videos on that upcoming as well, but who has this radio? Who went out and grabbed it immediately because you love the older versions so well? Who did that? That's what I did. I went and grabbed it immediately because I really loved the 868, the 878, and the 878 Plus. I have all three. I have the BTEC 6x2. I have the original Alenco MD5, blah, 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 whatever it is. I have the brand new Alenco dual band that Gigaparts carries. I probably should have done a video on that already before this one because it was out first, but I haven't yet, so that's going to be coming also. <laughs> but this radio I'm really looking forward to because it comes with all the necessary features you need with the push-to-talk uh, push button, the Bluetooth button, the 3100 milliamp hour battery, programming cable, and all that kind of stuff. You just download the firmware and the software for free. Who has this radio? Who's looking forward to using it? Put your comments below 73 and catch you guys next time.